today we're gonna turn it into a safety car. And the reason for turning it into a safety car, well, this car's coming with us on board. <laughs> Welcome back folks to the channel. Today we're doing something that I've wanted to do for a long time and it's install all of this. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys, when we first <laughs> laid all this out, it looked a lot better. Like all the B-roll that we put on screen. We, we set everything up and then we wanted to plug everything in all at once because we're 12 year olds. So now it looks like this. So this right here, for those who don't know, this is Blake's Explorer. The last time you saw this car was actually on Savage Garage. And this was the car that Randy and I got together and bought for Blake. And Blake absolutely loved it. And the next thing that we did on the channel with this car was we put a Valvetronic exhaust system on it. And you know, it's, it's kind of incredible really just how similar this car sounds to the Ford GT. <laughs> Now the car has a police interceptor grill. The front end of this car just, it looks so much more aggressive now. Other than the front grill, nothing else has been done with this car because it hasn't needed. Um, you know, this thing is just, it's been reliable. It's been Blake's daily. It, this might sound a little cheesy, but nothing makes me happier to see how happy Blake is driving this. Today we're gonna turn it into a safety car. That's basically what we're gonna be doing. And the reason for turning it into a safety car, well, this car's coming with us on Gold Rush. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that I made an announcement uh, that I'm gonna be going on Gold Rush Rally this year. This year's route is really incredible. Uh, I think it's called the One More Run Against the Sun, but we're gonna be going from Vegas to Miami. So it's basically a cross country rally. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, I know what car I'm bringing that I'm actually gonna drive on Gold Rush, and you can guess in the comments below what that is, but the support vehicle, I wanted to bring something that's not only a support vehicle, but a media vehicle. Um, the other thing is, uh, God forbid this car that I'm bringing on Gold Rush brakes because, well, I'm me. Um, I need a reliable vehicle. It is kind of ironic that the most reliable vehicle I'm bringing on Gold Rush this year is a Ford. By the way, folks, for those who don't know, this is Blake. My name is Blake. I have an Explorer. How many miles do you have on the Sploder now? Just clicked over 7,000, I want to say two days ago. Halloween is when I got this car last year. Mm -hmm. October, November, December, January, February, March, April, Six months, a thousand miles each month. That's, that's what we'll put it at. That's awesome. <laughs> Could you tell me real quick, how do you think this thing's gonna bear on Gold Rush? I think <laughs> this car is an Explorer. You can get an Explorer with not the third row seating, but because we have third row seating, just ample space. So we have, how many people coming on Gold it's Rush? Like, so I think the total roster is gonna end up being six. Six people, all six people could fit in this car and we would just have to throw our luggage in the luggage truck. Another thing, folks, that I haven't mentioned yet is Rachel's gonna be coming with us on Gold Rush. She's bringing her AMG GTS. So we'll be talking more about that very soon. But as much as I love that car of hers, the last two rallies she's done with it have not been terribly successful. Ooh, she got it. We ran over a tire. This car is gonna get wrapped for Gold Rush too. I've got my thing with Need for Speed cars and you know reliving my childhood. So comment below what you think I'm gonna wrap this as. This was basically a 1.30 a.m. Amazon shopping cart. That's what this was. They're all gonna fit in this car somehow. I wanna go through with you guys, just show you all the stuff here because if you go on a rally and you wanna do anything um, similar to what we're doing here, you'll be able to follow along and well, have your car ready for your next rally. So with that, let's start with the lights. So what we have here is a lot of different lights, mainly all from the company X-Sprite. Um, you can get these on Amazon, they're not too expensive. So if you don't mind all the lights real quick, you can see some of these lights you get from X-Sprite or any of these companies, they have this style controller, so you have the power light, and then you also have this switcher. So this will switch the, I don't know which light it's doing but it will switch the pattern of whatever the light is. But then there are also these, which is just an on and off toggle. Those are the easiest to deal with. Here is uh, probably one of my favorite things. The best part about this is the fact that this is, this is still the exact same PA system that I zip tied to the Urus back in 2019. 
Zip ties, baby. That zip thing ain't going nightmare. anywhere. There you go. <laughs> it's a zip tie nightmare. <laughs> so moving on to over here, this is a Uniden police scanner and CB hyper. This right here will allow us to listen to the police chatter. And it's got an antenna already with it that we will suction cup to the windshield and it has um, GPS built in as well. So that's great because a lot of police scanners that you can buy nowadays, you have to manually enter the zip code for it or whatever it needs to figure out the local channels of your area. Um, if you're not moving, that's great. This updates location automatically. And the antenna comes with is just long enough where it gets everything around you within, you know, five, 10 mile radius, not stuff, you, you know, that's gonna be 100 miles away. All we need is the stuff locally, and this will allow us to do that. So I'm very interested to see what the police are gonna be saying while we're on the rally on Gold Rush. So that's what this is, and as I mentioned, it also has a CB function. So if I wanna try and talk to some truckers or, you know, ask them nicely to move out of our way, or whatever it is, we can do that. For many of you, this is a very familiar sight. Um, many would call this old reliable, but this is a Valentine one. This is my personal one, I've had it for many years. This was uh, the original radar detector I ran in my C4. Uh, but I did buy something for it recently, which is this little guy. And this thing, this is the Bluetooth module that Valentine made. And uh, when it originally came out, I don't know how much functionality there was, but over the years, a lot of people have developed tools and also apps that you can run with this that make this not just, uh, not just all reliable. In fact, make it really a weapon. Uh, so that brings in this tablet. So this tablet right here, it's an old Nexus 7 tablet. I think the damn thing is 10 years old now, um, but it still works fine. It runs a late version of Android. And what this will allow me to do is run the JBV1 app. In this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at some of the coolest features available in JBV1, which I consider to be the very best countermeasure app available on the market. So this is more hours than I care to admit later. But let me show you what we have so far. We have the V1 setting up here, the lights. So we got that. Uh, we also have the rear lights, right? This is even better. Yeah. <laughs> look at the antenna though. Yeah, so th th those antennas go nowhere. Nowhere, it, they just look cool. Um, and uh, I don't know why having two of them sells it but, like more as a cop car, but yeah. Are they magnets? Car. Yeah, they're just big magnet site. So in real time right now, today is the, um, it's a Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday, Blake is taking this car into Fort for just a quick service, uh, a once over, just to make sure everything's ready to go for Gold Rush. Uh, we're also gonna have them do a couple things that, well, frankly, if I did, it would set the car on fire. So one of those things is run the wires for the PA system. The hardest part about doing the PA system on a car is finding a uh, place to run the wires and actually mount the PA. You know, the PA is a big, giant, like just, it's a very heavy metal speaker. This is the hardest thing to mount. And then of course the wires here, they need to be run um, through to the cabin. And on most cars, the wires will go from wherever it is down here It'll go through here, under this weather stripping right here. Um, it'll go under there and that's how we'll get it into the cabin. So once that's through, once that's done, um, this will be ready to go. This on, oh. Mm -hmm. There's the tablet, there go the lights, there goes the radar detector up here. There goes that. Oh. Pleasure, PLS. 3712, truck 716, fire breakers 716, response 7 out, one box area, I think 16, we're pretty official. 13. It worked! <laughs> I'm on the way, I'm on the way. No, no, no. Come on, big boy. Oh. Come on, big boy. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Come on, big boy. Get it out of here! Jeez, the tint on this these windows. I mean, I thought my 5% was what? dark. No, this is just 5%. It, it literally like became right nighttime. Yeah, because <laughs> because right really? there it's 6 p.m. Here it's 9:30. <laughs> Trip number two to Home Depot. Blake, we need a grill. We don't, but we need a grill. The Home Depot theme intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't need it, but can we get the 60? Okay. 
I mean, so, yeah. This is the longest zip tie I've ever 60, seen. 60 inches. Just like me. This could hold together even the most far gone marriages. <laughs> oh, wow. I just said you wanted to get a car for lemons and use zip ties as a motor mount. Dude, those are motor mounts. Those are motor mounts. <laughs> those are motor mounts. I know motor mounts when I see them. Don't don't mind cable zip ties. That's wrong. Those are motor, motor mounts for sure. <laughs> one also, and just splice them all with one color. <laughs> That's what I was gonna. You ask. See how expensive this shit is? Look at look at these prices. This is why we should have gone to AutoZone. I'm a strong believer in doing the wrong thing the right way. And I feel like that's what we're doing here tonight, getting all these lights in. Because the Ford dealership politely told us, you, so we gotta get this done. First off, can we introduce them to the newly refined PA system? <laughs> it, See, we have a little oh, weave wow. going on. More, <laughs> more dremeling later. It has been completed. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh, that looks legit. Mm. That looks legit, legit. Oh, it's bright! I know, it it's hurts. so fucking bright. It's so cool though. Dude. <laughs> that is so worth it. Oh my gosh. Do you know how long it would take any of any us? Any of us? I pulled earlier. Oh. oh my God, and you can put this all back, right? That, you wanted it back? <laughs> and it, it would have taken us like a, like a minimum of seven hours just to muster the confidence to pull one section of that off. Because we, we stared at it for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, see, this, yeah, this. Oh yeah, my God. I never. <laughs> so once I hit, just, just start dremeling. Just, but don't make progress for this. I'll pick up, you f***ing whore. He's just gonna pick up and be like, what? <laughs> Wait, what the f*** are you doing? They put a hole in my Explorer, <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it, Dove. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Dove. Alrighty, later. Bye, bud. <laughs> I love that, you know, Dove just does not care. Dove care never had a f to give about anything ever. Like, wait a minute, Dove didn't even ask a single question about what was going on. Editor put like two and a half hours later or something on the bottom left of this. I got bribes in the London. But yeah, come, come see what your car looks like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that looks awesome. That looks, that looks. <laughs> so folks, here is the finished product. This came out so much better than I thought it would. So I figured I'd walk with you guys, just show you how we installed all these lights. And you know, maybe in the future, you guys can replicate something similar on one of your rally cars. But uh, Blake, hi. Thumbs I had no idea they were behind me. Blake, what do yes. you think of this thing? Well, given the fact that I accidentally had somebody just pulled to the side already, yeah. I <laughs> I gotta be careful. So obviously we need the Ford emblems though. We haven't done that yet. Um, By the way, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse's here and so is Angela, Blake's girlfriend. But they were trying to dodge being in the frame. Yeah. But anyway, let's, let's go through all where all these lights are, Blake. So, do we want to shut the car off or do we want to just leave it running? <laughs> Let's leave it running. Okay. So this 
This contraption was made by a good friend, David, who came out last night. You saw him in the video. Mm -hmm. um, only David would think of something like this. We yeah. talked about this before. Mm -hmm. We tried, Jimbo and I, or even Je Jesse, you didn't even want to do it either. I wanted uh, no part of it. I <laughs> wanted nothing to do with yeah. it. <laughs> Jesse was the one we called to hopefully encourage Blake and I to you know, have the balls to drill into the car to make it happen, and that didn't happen. Jesse actually had some brains and said no. Uh, but then we called somebody else, David. So thank you, David, for um, well doing this because he actually does things with his hands for a living. So he knew how to do this correctly. Because if I did this or you did this, Blake, um, it well, it just wouldn't have happened. What we did was we bought a, I think it was like an $8 license plate frame. Uh, came with a set of two. So no. we turned them off just so we could see a little bit better, but we didn't use actual screws into the license plate frame because they were, they have to be this short. So we used, obviously, zip ties. Very, very small and thin, but very strong zip ties. And all the wires, there's one wire on each side for the light. It goes smack dab in the middle. Yep. So that makes it so we only had to drill one hole. And uh, it was run beautifully through the trim piece here and then down in here somewhere. And um, <laughs> well, it works. So yes. <laughs> let's let's show the rest. Now, this is obviously, we got a lot going on here. We've got the two rear lights, and then we've got these two extra top pieces here. Um, they're bright. Very bright. They look good though. Yes. But uh, here's how it was all run. So we have everything basically being hidden under a bunch of these trim pieces. If you get in there, you can see. Oh. Yeah, so back here we got a little wire loom we created, and this right here, this is just the controller for the side lights. Um, we had to put this somewhere, uh, but it just labeled it a little bit. Uh, and we've got the on and off button. It stays on all the time because we have it uh, being turned on and off with the splitter that we have in the front. And we press this button and it'll change the pattern of the lights back here. We ran all the wires, you know, under this, like right by the seat track here, wedged it inside. So that way nobody steps on it possibly and it doesn't get in the way of using the car. So we hit all the wires under the floor mats here and it goes under the seat and there is a whole bunch of wires down there. So folks, here's where everything is gonna be controlled. Now you'll also notice right off the bat, the radar detector is missing as well as the PA system. We decided it makes more sense actually to put both of those in my car because when we go on Gold Rush, I'll probably be leading most of the time. So it would make more sense to have that in my S65. But here's what we have now. We have this four-way splitter and we've got the lights all labeled. We have the grill slash plate. Then we've also got the rear lights, the front lights, and then the rear windshield. And it's all on this because what we can do now, we have this toggle here for the on and off switch. The idea is for the driver to be able to just hit one button while they're driving, you know, not take their focus away from where they're driving and turn everything on. So this button right here, this light switch, allows us to do that. So we hit that, everything is now off, all the side lights, everything. We hit this again, and now everything is on. And we also have this control here that's showing us what the grill and the plate lights are doing, which is awesome. So we jump on the driver's side here, and we've got this wire that runs down here under the, uh, the uh, floor mat, and we'll explain that in a moment. Uh, but, you know, as the driver here, you know, we've got a couple things. So first we have easy access, those are the windshield wipers, um, but we have easy access to the PA controller. And this thing, you know, it's a ball. That's my favorite one. One of my favorite parts about this particular PA system and all of the controls, the on, the off button, uh, they're all on the control. A lot of the PA systems you buy online, they have the box. You know, it looks much more like a, like a police PA system. It's got the box and then it has the actual radio you take off. Um, that's cool, but you have to reach to the box to, you know, control the sounds that you want to have out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just more pressing of buttons. And when you're on a rally, when you're driving, it's nice to be able to hit one button and it does everything. So that's why I've always liked this. Um, the only thing you got to watch out for with these, and I, I know because of uh, my experience killing other car batteries, the PA system um, is the one thing I know of for a fact that even when the damn thing is off, um, it still drains on your battery. So whenever I talk about this with people, I tell them, do not wire this directly to a battery, do what we did. So what we did was we routed the, the power cables for the PA to a cigarette lighter toggle right here. And right now it's on, you can see the lights on right there and we got it labeled as PA. If the driver wants to turn on the PA, lift the armrest up and the on and off switch is right here. So this on and off switch gives us the ability to know that no matter what, there is absolutely no draw at all on any of this stuff. So, you know, we have the master kill, like I mentioned for the lights here, and then we also have the master kill uh, for the PA and then whatever's plugged in here. 
We also put a little note here with Gaffer State that says light slash PA off for the driver, um, just in case you, know, you forget. Now the last thing I wanna show you guys is what's under the hood. This is how we rig the PA. Now that looks bad. And um, on first glance, you would be right, it is bad. But that is not going anywhere. The right way to rig a PA is to mount it on a metal piece of the car, drill into it. Uh, but the thing is, you know, unless I was taking the whole bumper off and gonna put it somewhere like, you know, inside the grill here or way down here, whatever, you know, the, it would have just taken a lot more time than frankly we wanted to spend. Um, the other thing that you can do on these cars, and I'm sure some of you kind of expected was, well, why didn't you put a bull bar on it? You know, all the cop cars, the interceptors, they all have some kind of a bull bar. On Ford ST forums, Blake has, um, he has read that some people have experienced when you put a bull bar on, there's extra drag, there's extra wind noise. So because of that, we just figured it wasn't worthwhile to do. Because at the end of the day, this is Blake's daily. And as someone who drove around an Aventador with cop lights on it for, I don't know how many thousands of miles, but long enough to know that wind noise is horrible on a rally, I can tell you that if you can get rid of any kind of extra noises that your car is making while on a rally, do it. So no bull bar. Last thing to mention here, folks, are the two LEDs in the front here. And these guys, uh, we also uh, held in place with zip ties. But the wires for these, they run from the back here, they go through a few trim pieces and then run all the way to the front of the cabin. The key with most cars for running these wires without you know, tearing apart you know, a whole bunch of your dash is being able to slip the wires under the quarter panel here between the weather stripping and the A-pillar of your car. If you can get it under there, you can wedge whatever wires you want. It's a great, you know, um, pass through essentially. That's the way I, you know, ran it on, um, you know, Randy's Urus years ago, and many other cars have installed this on. So folks, with all that being said, thank you very much for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, comment below, and let me know what you think we should do to this car for Gold Rush if you think of anything else. Uh, I do have one more thing in the works. You know, Blake, you know what it is. Uh, but it's, it's gonna be good, and we'll be announcing that soon. But like I said, comment below if you think of anything else we should do to the car, but this thing, it's gonna be a proper support vehicle. So with all that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.